I'm 19 years old and I'm standing on a stage in front of 70,000 people. There are so many people in this crowd, I cannot even see the faces in the back. They are just tiny little dots. That's how many people there are. And they're all there to see me and my co-hosts host this noontime variety show. As a British Filipina who had come to the Philippines to pursue my dreams of becoming a star, I had truly made it. I was on a noontime show from Monday to Saturday, every day with the whole country watching. I was famous. And just as I was starting to get into this new, shiny, beautiful life that I just made for myself, I was drugged and I was raped in my own apartment by a fellow celebrity. Now the British side of me was saying, go to the hospital, go to the police, get swabbed, you know, do something. And the Filipino side of me was saying, this is not going to end well for you. You see, the Philippines is a patriarchal country with rape culture rife through society. And even the old rape law used to state that if you were not a virgin at the time that you were raped, it was considered your fault by law. So I decided to stay quiet, to preserve myself. And to be honest with you, at the time, all I really wanted to do was to wash the smell of his saliva off of my body. And so, as time went on, I started to tell a few people that I knew what had happened to me. And a co colleague of mine said to me, I was also drugged and raped, but if you ever speak up about it, you'll never work in this industry again. And I thought this was interesting because not only was this going on, it was known that you shouldn't talk about it. So again, I chose silence. And my career thrived. I ended up working for MTV, hosting international shows for Beyonce, Rihanna, Chris Brown. I was on magazines. When you drove down the highway, you would see my face on a billboard, my face on the magazines. I was signing autographs. I have taken pictures with literally thousands upon thousands of people. But something was always wrong. And nine years later, I see on the news that three other women have come out and said that they have been raped by the same man. And it was like a nightmare. All of a sudden, his face was on every TV channel, on every magazine, it was everywhere. And the thing that horrified me the most was he wasn't being canceled. In fact, the women who had come out were being vilified in the media and bashed on social media like crazy. Fame whores, attention seekers, prostitutes, you deserve to be raped. And I was horrified. And I decided that whatever platform I had, I needed to use it to speak up to defend these women. And so I did, and I didn't say I was raped, but I said, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know who a rapist can be. You know, like, don't say anything if you don't know what you're talking about. And all the bashing turned on to me. Fame whore, trying to stay relevant by talking about rape. And then I was blacklisted, as predicted, in the only industry I've ever known since I was 18 years old. If there were phone calls coming, they were always saying, Sorry, Kat, we decided to go with somebody else. And even though they wouldn't say exactly what it was about, it was always very clear. So the months went on, and in the Philippines, they have a history of keeping rapists on TV. And this man was no exception. And then the further time went on, and I saw how much money and power can keep you out of prison, I decided that I needed to do more, and I needed to speak up for myself. And so 
media outlets had approached me for my story several times and I had turned them all down because I knew they just wanted the gossip and the scandal and they were going to edit my story for their own agendas. So I decided to go on my friend's live video podcast where he wouldn't edit my story. Now nobody knew I had made this decision. This was my very personal decision to do this and I needed to do something more. And on the day that I decided to do it, I was absolutely terrified. I didn't want to do it anymore. I was at home crying, like, why is this my problem? Why do I have to fix this? Why, I didn't rape anybody, you know, why me? Please, you know, I was even begging God. I said, God, please don't make me be the person who has to do this. Please, I'm too scared. And then all of a sudden I get a message on my phone and I go over and I take a look at the message and it's a friend of mine that I've known since I was five years old. And out of the blue, she had messaged me and said, I'm so proud of what you were doing because I was raped when I was in college and I never told anybody. And this broke me. How could this have happened to somebody that I loved and I had never known. So I made my decision. I went on the show. I told my friend what I wanted to do and he said to me, are you sure, Kat? Are you sure? You know what's gonna happen to you, are you sure? And I said, I have to do something. And after I said it about an hour in, for about 15 minutes I detailed my entire rape from start to finish. And when that podcast ended, the silence around me was so loud. There are a crew talking to me and I didn't really understand. I walked out of the place in a haze, just thinking, what have I done? And then the messages started. I saw your interview. What did you, what, what happened? What are you doing? What are you, why did you say this? What's going on? And then the bashing started. You're a prostitute. You deserve to be raped. I even received a death threat, saying it would only take one bullet to the head to kill me. And so I paid rent for the next two months in my apartment, but I didn't stay there because I was so afraid that somebody was gonna come and kill me. Now, as time went on, I was so alone. Nobody understood, my family couldn't understand, my friends didn't want the scandal, they believed what they read in the news. And I was so depressed and in pain every day. And one day I was just fed up of feeling so helpless. I decided to do something about it. So what did I do? I changed my Twitter name because that was the best thing that I could do for myself. <laughs> I changed my Twitter name to Breaking Free. I was shedding my celebrity image and I was breaking free. And then more months went by of being unwashed, unloved, and alone with my cat. And somebody that I knew convinced me that I needed to go outside. Because I hadn't been outside much because I didn't know who these people were, who was my enemy, who was my friend, who were these invisible people online bashing me. And I was so vividly aware of the fact that everybody knew I had been raped and just how vulnerable this made me feel and just how cruel people can really be. So I decided to go to this event in the mountains. There was only going to be a few people there. There was going to be a big bonfire. And I went in disguise. I was wearing a big beanie pulled down to my eyebrows and a big thick scarf and a puffy jacket, no makeup, so nobody would recognize me. And I was walking around on this mountain with this huge bonfire glowing on my face and starting to feel comfortable in my own skin again when somebody taps me on the shoulder and I almost jump straight back out of my skin again. And this woman, 
she's standing next to me and I freak out and think, what does she want? Is she going to attack me? Is she his fan? Is she going to bash me? What's going to happen? And she says to me, Miss Cat, can I take a picture with you, please? And I breathe a sigh of relief and I say, oh my gosh, of course, of course, let's take a picture together, of course, let's take a picture. So I took a picture and as she was walking off, she suddenly yelled, breaking free. And just like that, I wasn't alone anymore. Thank you.